James Johnson, linebackers coach and defense coordinator at Richmond Senior High in North Carolina. Uh, you know, if anybody sees this, would like to contact me. My Twitter is on the screen. That's probably the best method. Um, school email, James Johnson at richmond.k12.nc.us. That's James Johnson at richmond.k12.nc.us. It's not on the screen, so I'll repeat it twice for you. So kind of moving in, and I hate spending a lot of time on background, but I think kind of my background's what's really helped me, you know, become a better linebacker coach. So, you know, six years as a defensive coordinator, three as offensive coordinator, two as a head coach, uh, kind of plethora of experience there, you know, and then, you know, within all that, three years on the offensive line, two years with quarterbacks, five years with defensive backs. I'll be going into my fifth year in linebackers, but that's kind of been split up. My first two years were with linebackers and now my three most recent. And then, you know, two years with defensive line. And, you know, also within that, coaching some different systems, split back beer, gun options, spread offense, you know, 4-3, 4-2, 5-3-4. Three, so really run the gamut kind of schemes, a lot of man-free coverage, a lot of quarters, uh, three under three deep fire zone, man blitz, you you name it. You know, I've kind of seen it and been a part of coaching. And I, I think for some young guys out there kind of getting off topic a little bit, but I think that's, really something that can benefit a young guys is coaching on both sides of the ball early in your career and, and coaching multiple positions early in your career. And I know, you know, particularly kind of seems like DB guys, uh, OL guys, quarterback guys, all really like that's what they do and that's what they specialize in. And I get it. Those are, to me, some of the harder positions to coach and some of the most intricate. But sometimes flipping sides of the ball or, or switching the level of the defense your own can, can kind of really be of – used to you and I think that's really helped me coming back to coach linebackers you know after being on the offensive line and being with DBs and quarterbacks has really kind of helped me clarify some of my thoughts and how I want to put some things together so that kind of gives you my background and how I plan practice and how I plan drills and how they carry over to the games really some of the things I want to focus on today so you know with, with O-line I kind of you know I had 45 minutes of India a day at a 1A school and we ran a lot of stuff on offense, power, counter, outside zone, inside zone, triple, midline, trap, sprint out, play action, drop back, quick game. And, you know, I had 45 minutes to teach it. So to me, I, I, what I did is I kind of broke things in, into fundamentals and, you know, come in and here's five fundamentals I really need to be able to do. And how can I take those five fundamentals and apply it to each scheme and block that we, you know, we need to be able to run. So when I got back to linebackers, kind of the fundamentals that stuck out to me are, are movement, reads, block destruction, tackling, and coverage skills. And, you know, really probably focus on the first four today, um, really probably one, three, and four there, um, movement, block destruction, and tackling. Didn't really have access to all of my drills because I was going to get a lot of stuff filmed this spring and this fall. And also that's kind of been shut down with COVID-19. And so then when I tell you those skills, I try to build them into drills. Also, we can work just the skill. So if we want to work tackling, you know, for instance, that'd be a form tackle. If we just want to work a read, you know, it's your initial read step. But then with linebackers, really, I like to apply a lot of, of vision to it. So where are their eyes moving after the initial read, after they feed a block, where are their eyes going? Are they seeing space in front of them? You know, those types of things. And then I like to add in a level of decision making. So for instance, a one-on-one -on -one tackling drill may now have uh, a bag out in the middle of it so that there's some kind of distraction, you know, something that's really making that linebacker process. Do I need to take this space or do I need to move somewhere else? You know, and, and how does that distraction, how does that object in my way force me to go somewhere? So hopefully we'll see that carry over into some of the drills when we, we start looking at the drills here in a second. And then just a game like random, randomness. So, and some of the ways I may get that is if we're working a drill with two guards in the back as a, as a read drill, for instance, is I'll put that back in different spots to start so their eyes have to progress to different places. You know, if we're working the feet in the block and then really fitting on a tackle, something we may do is after the rip, that, that running back may start a lot of different places. And I think sometimes we get stuck on being so static and I just add that randomness by telling whoever's simulating the back, you know, you've got a box in here, line up wherever you want, move at whatever tempo you want, and kind of let the, the, the players introduce that randomness. And then, you know, I like to do a lot of small-sided games. So, you know, kind of two-on-two -two tackles. There's one block where we don't know who he's going to block with two linebackers coming from different levels and one ball carrier starting at kind of a random place. 
and we go from there. And there, there's lots of ways you can, you know, kind of introduce that. And unfortunately, I don't have enough of that on film today. But if anybody's interested, again, feel free to contact me. I, you know, I'd love to talk about it with you and maybe pick your brain on some of the ideas that you have. So all that said, you know, now we can kind of move into to our uh, – all right, so now we'll take a look, kind of transition in some of the drill work we do. I'm not going to waste a lot of time on read step. We're a, a six-inch downhill read step. And, you know, in full honesty, sometimes it shows up in the game, sometimes it doesn't. That's, that's something we'll look at and how it kind of hurts us when it doesn't. And, you know, really, we talk about, you know, I talk about the different components of, of the drills. This is a skill, okay? So, so it's something we can work. You know, just like tackling can be a skill, block and stress can be a skill, where that's the only thing we do. And as the year progresses and even practice progresses, try to start stacking those skills within drills. So all I'm doing to, to trigger the kids right here is, is, you know, I try to get them to really focus on one thing. So we talk about vision and eye. So it may just be my index finger in the air and just moving left or right an inch. Or it may be my fist just moving slightly. So they've got to focus on kind of really a small point of contact and really, really train their eyes on that one thing as opposed to my body stepping. I think they can be a little lazier with their eyes when you do that. So obviously you can get a lot of reps fast. You know, it's not anything revolutionary that that nobody's done. So transitioning into film, trying to put a little bit of film with each one of the drills I have right here. In this example, you'll see 58 ends up on our left, 32 ends up on our right, 58 takes a, a good read step, able to get downhill, fit the tackle. 32 is going to actually cross over and step under himself some. And to me, he gives up his base, gives up his, his basically his ability to stay square. Now the guard's able to get on him and wash him. So, so again, don't want to spend a ton of time on re-step. I think it's pretty simple, fundamental, but just some example right here of where it can get you into trouble or where it can get you into a good spot. So now progressing, you know, typically there, there may be some other movement stuff we do. Uh, like I said, I like to keep things as game-like as possible, so we're not going to run a lot of bags. We're not going to do a lot of, of cone drills, where it's, you know, four corners or the W drill or, or any of that stuff. So we may step and get downhill. We may step, get downhill and shuffle, just kind of based off of the movements of my hand. But, you know, one of my favorite things to kind of progress to in, in group work is just taking a guy and having him simulate a, an offensive lineman, and we'll start with him being stationary, and we're just going to work downhill Okay, so we get re-step, we get a downhill run at an angle now, and then we're going to rip stack. We're just trying to get really kind of cheek to cheek right there and take the space out of, out of that so that what we're simulating now is we've stacked the block, the running back's already leveraged us to the other side of the blocker. So now we really want to get flat and be able to, to run that thing back down. So some really good examples of that showing up on film for you right here. First one, you know, 58 says so he's going to show up a lot. So, so here he is again. He's going to work downhill against the zone. Okay, and, and pretty good job of being able to tempo the back, but still play downhill. And what I like now is once he sees it, he goes. He's able to rip. You know, 72 hangs on the double team a, a little bit long. So, again, as I say, I, I want to go ahead and force that offensive lineman's hand. So if we see that space, let's, let's hit it, and then let's get flat and take away those other gaps by – by playing through the backside. So a lot like a, a defensive end that may squeeze through a big gap on the gap exchange. If we've got space, the running back sees space, let's go ahead and take it, okay? And then let's get flat. And, you know, you see a really good kind of ankle tackle right here and don't have, you know, cuts and clips on my, my tackle. All of my tackling stuff was hoping to get some of that, you know, through the spring with the bags and this fall, hopefully when we get back out there, you know, on bodies and, and show how we drill that. So a little short on some of the, the drill work we do just – Due to COVID. So, you know, a couple more examples right here. You'll see a 42 on this one, you know, coming from the backside, he get, gets a pull. Okay, he's working downhill, and, and honestly, they've got a gap there on the double team on the nose. So he's got to make a decision, you know, as he stacks the nose, am I fitting the A gap right now? He sees it's pretty tight, decides to go over the top. He's going to try to work the rip stack back in there, actually gets held, but a great job just continuing to fight, drop, and get low. You know, as he gets low, he's he's still able to, fortunately, you know, despite the hold kind of taking him to the ground, he's able to go down low and make that tackle. And, you know, an example of basically the skills we just looked at, the movement, the rip stack, and getting flat, and then still being able to make that tackle. So one last example. You know, we got him really, he's on the edge blitz right here. So he, he he's a little slow getting started, but he comes tight off of the double team. See a really good picture of him stacking. So... 
want to see those drills carry over to the game or, or even, you know, take the game and break it down and see what you need, see what your kids are doing over and over that you aren't working in practice where you can put them in that position. And, you know, again, a little slow on the backside here. So they've got to start to get a scap again, but he's able to real, get flat and play back through those inside gaps, you know, because he knows where the running back's at. So even as he's pressing the rip, his eyes immediately have to go to the back's near hip. And, you know, he, he's, he's a good kid. He tweeted the other day, if you ever learned anything from him, get your eyes to the near hip. And I'm not so much as interested in the hip as I am as, as let's find our next target. So same type of movement pattern right here. And all we're doing is coming to bounce with the near foot up. So to me, this, this carries over a few ways. You get your read step, you get your downhill run. Now you're working possibly two things. It could be fitting for a tackle, okay? Peck on peck, what a lot of people call a profile tackle. Uh, it could be fitting for a block, for a punch, pull. And you can do this without a lot of contact. And, and still, to me, you're working three or four game-like skills. So it really making them come to balance so they have to focus on getting that near foot up. So 58 is on our left right here, probably about two plays later than, than what we saw a while ago. And you can see, takes a read step. Now he's fitting kind of patient, okay? Not as fast downhill as we always are. And really good job seeing you know, the defensive end get watching that gap, but now he's fitting, you know, trying to get that near foot up, ready to take on the block. If it comes off the double team, it doesn't come off, and now he's in a position to make the tackle. Doesn't quite get the near foot up like we want. You can see him kind of strive to it. He gets there right after the chest contact. But to me, that's almost, you know, not a picture perfect example of the movement pattern we just worked. We're in a little bit of condensed space on the goal line and the way we're defending that particular offense that week. But you can see, again, things that are in the game or what we're practicing, you know, as opposed to just jumping on a bag and running through them and, and getting those agilities. Another game example right here, downhill run by 42, see space, smart enough to realize something's coming. Okay, gets his right foot, the near foot down, takes on, takes on the puller. So he's able to fit the puller that, that was coming for him. Bounce back off because he keeps that, boom, near foot down, get off and, and be able to play. Take a look at number nine. I think we're going to get a, a, another pretty good picture of it right here. Okay. Gets that near foot up, strike, able to get movement on a, on a bigger player and, and really take the block and put it back into the hole. So one of the fundamentals we talk about a lot of times, if you can't beat the block or you can't fit because there's two gaps, is using the, the offensive player's body to, to play that gap. So to me, you know, he really helped kind of close up the space that, that 24 slide into from the backside. And again, it relates back to the fundamental we worked in practice, okay? Taking the read step, movement pattern, now how are we fitting on something? So it's, it's just for me, how we drill is, is constantly looking at what's happening on film, okay, and, and how can we apply it. So another real good picture of 42 just coming downhill. This is much block destruction as his movement pattern, but the emphasis on getting that near foot down. You see him is a little late getting it down, but he understands it's got to come back down once he gets there. Bang, once he strikes, he's able to get back off and, and go make a play. So those are, again, let's – it's, it's going to show up constantly in your game film. So good look. Both of them apply it right here, 42, getting downhill. Offensive tackles able to, to, to get off of the defensive end pretty quick. As you can see, 42, strike, stuff that thing back in the B gap, really taking that away. Okay, now the end's able to come back down and, and play the dive. We've got extra help out there, so we don't really have to squeeze, scrape, and, and more of a zero look right here which lets us play fast downhill, okay? And then a picture-perfect example by nine. Zone to me, he starts to press the gap. You see the center come off of the double team. He gets that near foot down, okay? And again, able to kind of just stuff that thing back in there. So, you know, typically we have a little bit bigger linebackers at our place. We've been fortunate we're able to really play downhill and, and do some of those things. So... A look now, another movement pattern. It's that angle run downhill. Now we're shuffling for whatever reason. We've overrun it. Okay, we started downhill. There's a late pull, a late cutback. We got to redirect. And again, we're working the rip stack. So now we've added a transition, an extra movement pattern on that shuffle. And, you know, we'll try to emphasize keeping the base on the shuffle. Obviously, right here, we had a, a, a click of the heels, much better by number nine. 
you know, his rep and just consistently, you know, we take the drill, we add something to it. So now as we go downhill and shuffle, we put a guy back here to simulate the back and all he's going to do is point. So now once we rip, we got to make a decision. Do we get flat, you know, and run the direction that we were coming from down the line of scrimmage or are we going to stack it? And, you know, in a game, that decision will be based off of where the back is. Right here, we're just basing off of a reaction. Okay, boom, downhill, shuffle. To me, like, we got to train our eyes to go one more place once we once we kind of cross that blocker now. So we're, we're continually working the vision. All right, downhill, shuffle, real decision based off of vision now. Okay, and they're not always perfect. Some of them screwing up here and there, but that's that's what we're getting a look at. Real it goes stack and you can see there's hesitation sometimes so when that hesitation is there we know we've got to be more more fluid in our movement so there's something there we can probably coach up and then we've also got to be able to look and really just examine you know why are we hesitating do we need more reps making those decisions and to me that that's that's a huge thing is just putting them in that cycle where here's what i see what decision do i have to make so a great example right here of of, of coming downhill all right He's in the gap, now the back's wider, so he's going ahead and getting flat, so that's simulating. We, we ripped just a while ago. There's the point going that way, so get flat and run. And this, you know, again, for me, it's just constantly, how can how can I design my drills to be game-like? You know, and, and, and some of that comes from one of my mentors in the offensive line, you know, he, he, one of the ways he would drill stuff is he would take his steps, you know, and fit on the target. Then he would, he would go fit it up on the target on, on double team. So we're already fit and we're working up to the linebacker. You know, and then we take and uh, we go fits with movement and running games. And to me, that's just continuing to stack those skills to make things more game-like and using the vision. And that's one of the things that really influenced me to kind of take this style of design for my linebackers. And, you know, again, with quarterbacks, the, the, the you know, going to some of the R4 stuff that's out there that, that study with Doug Maddox and Darren Slack and, and how quarterbacks are, are drilled on making decisions these days. And that was something I learned and thought, why not apply it to linebackers? Well, you know, can you apply that to every position? And I think there's ways you can if you really dig into it. So looking again at some of the examples, here we are downhill. We're a little wide in our fit. Got to fall back in and make that play. So that movement pattern, that decision cycle just continually shows up in games you know and you're seeing it here you've seen those things against gap schemes against zone schemes against a, a midline split back beer type scheme so i think they're fundamentals that can carry over no matter what so when you get in the summer and you start working those things it's going to be really good for you here you see 42 press downhill bang shuffle now go down low and make the tackle so those skills are, are repeating over and over and if you feel like the, the angle tackle is going to be something you've got to make repeat, or that, that angle tackle is something you got to make repeatedly, when, when they get into the shuffle and they rip, you can just stand your dummy up over there and have somebody hold the dummy, tackle it, and roll. So there, there's lots of ways you can know you can just keep building, stacking those skills. And that's, you know, that's really the gist of what I'm trying to get done at linebacker. And another look by 58, getting a little wide, stacks, shuffles, falls back in on the quarterback's ankles. So all this stuff is, is really happening over and over in multiple games. Get a look at a gap scheme right here. So fitting downhill on the oh, – excuse me, not the, not the tape I thought it was, but here's 58. So he's stepping, he's working downhill, okay, and really – you know, maybe with the two pullers and getting that block back, they've got us gapped a little bit right there. So 42's wanting, wanting to decide where to fit. He's got to shuffle, get over the top. Now he's able to insert. But nine is the guy I really want to look at. He gets that step. He's downhill. They created a pretty good bit of space. So now he's got to really get in there on, on the puller. and get that near foot up so a step bang downhill near foot up and if nothing else he's able to force it back to the 42 who's coming in a little late you know 42 gets step downhill late seeing the pulls okay late reacting um 
probably worried about playing the quarterback right here. We should have been chasing. We don't get a real good chase, and they get the down block and knock the end off. So, but it's, the things are going to happen in the game. Put them in situations. Everything can't be perfect. Everything can't be crystal clear. So put them in situations where they have to make decisions and and decide how they're going to react and play based off of what they're seeing. So another really good picture by 42 right here. A little more downhill early on than we want to be. Okay, and he he's potentially even on, you know, a blitz right here, and we'll read out of a blitz. If he's on a blitz, I'd like to see him a little faster. If he's not on a blitz, I'd like to see a little better reaction on, on the initial read step. If he's down here, now you see that shuffle. All right, and it looks like initially the insert's right here. Okay, but you can see the, the four technique from the other side pinching in, and now that gap's closed, so I'm just going to scrape over the top and keep working to get to the tackle. So again, it's just a cycle of, of what am I seeing, what decision am I making? And it it carries over so much in everything we do. So now I look at some young kids when we kind of progress, you know, to, to some more read drills, in and out is a drill. I, I'm sure I saw it from somewhere 15 years ago, but two backers and we just work an angle. And you can see again, uh, these guys are really young. The guy to our right had never worked this before this day. The guy to the left had had a little bit of experience, you know, but a little bit of a false step on that second rep by him. But you can see even as we look at the second rep, he's coming to bounce. He's really working that near foot up, okay, and he's shuffling over to close space. You can see blue shirt really a lot of weight forward, not used to coming to bounce, not used to fitting, leaving that space in between, okay, and that's something we want to work to take out. So we'll work this drill, you know, in some fashion almost every day. And I vary it up by putting – putting the running back in different places a lot of times, especially as they get older and, and more experienced, he can start really inside the tackle box anywhere he wants and even various depth. And, you know, so despite maybe he's working in the A-gap every time, but now he's coming from a different angle, and I feel like that really changes the way we're going to fit our leverages and our steps. You know, going back to that randomness and drills. Uh, another thing I'll do is just put a couple of defenders in there. It can be 2-2 two, two techniques. It can be 3-D linemen to simulate a 3-4, okay, and they're just going to step into a random gap so now they got to decide, okay, I see color, you know, do I need to take space out? And you can see the young guy fitting a little bit later than the, the, the older guy there. As you can see the older guy fitting, trying to get that near foot in. I don't mind the position right here of, of, of my younger guy, Dylan, on the left, okay, because he's got to make that decision. If that thing were to cut back, now he's still learning to, to tempo that with something else in the way, whether it be an O-lineman, a D-lineman, some combination of them. And – Again, to me, that's just adding randomness, vision, decision making into the drill, and you know something we can we can continually drill over and over. And to me, that's that's linebacker at at its finest. So, looking at the width of the play, we'd like to see thirty two a little more downhill. He's probably too tight, okay. But as he shuffles over, there's you know there's a gap that starts to open, but all of a sudden, in fifty eight, even starts downhill on it. But that, that four technique kind of gets in the gap and closes it. A gap still open. 32's got to make a decision. Okay, based off the width of the play, he continues to get over top. 58's fitting downhill. Four techniques in that gap. So now he just shuffles over and he's sitting there to make the play. So to me, that drill is, is as fundamental of a linebacker drill as you can get. You know, just another look at it, some hopping here from a young kid, but just continually hammering this drill and finding ways to add to it. Some false steps here. So, you know, obviously we, we want to correct some of that. But you can see them now they're having to redirect off of the false step. That's a movement pattern I didn't show, but we'll work real quick after our re-steps is just getting that counter footwork in. Uh, sometimes you're going to step and get a guard pull. All right, so now with our older kids, what we're simulating right here, and it's a little harder to tell on the first one, but we're putting, you know, two O-linemen in. I don't really care if this guy is a, is a guard or a tackle or what we want to call him. This guy's a guard, and he's pulling. They know he's pulling right now. So we teach the guard that's getting the pull to essentially stack the nose and then find the open space, you know, and he's got to make a determination. Sometimes there's a first open space, but maybe the ball is already a lot wider in that space, and that goes back to the seeing with your vision making a decision where to go. So all we're getting right here is a pull. 
All right, and once we get the pull, linebackers call him pull, pull, pull. He's working downhill based off of the release of the other offensive lineman. He'll decide where to fit. So right here, obviously, there'd be a, a, a pretty big space right there. You know, so maybe a tackle just climbed high for whatever reason, and he's giving us a run through. All right, so so we're just training. Where's the open space? And okay, where's the running back going to go? So right here, we have him fit tight. Normally, we'd like that a little bit tighter. Okay, but, but where it is, we'd still be in a position to rip stack that block if it was coming to us like we've seen earlier and then be able to play based off of where the ball carrier goes, you know, once we rip stack. So here's another one. All right. So here it is just kind of from a different angle. Get a little better look possibly at some of the some of the fists that we're teaching. All right, so obviously we'll, we'll see more gap stuff right here. This little, here's 42, really taking a step. He doesn't need to because we're in zero. You know, he'd been used to a couple weeks before we played a, a big, counter read type team is, is he was on the quarterback all night. Now we're in zero. So I'd really, really like him just to be able to play the back, understand if the quarterback comes out that, that 24 can take him. But he takes that step, starts to get down downhill, shuffle. Now he's got to make a decision, right? Where's, where's the fit? Everything's up wide, so he's able to bang, get back flat through there and, and get in on the tackle. Now, don't like indecision by nine right here. You got a blitz coming outside you looping in. So it might seem downhill right now fitting. You know, and understand we're in zero. You can go fit and get into that near foot look because he's hesitant. You know, to me, he allows himself to get blocked. You know, he's, he's worrying about gaps that he doesn't have and not just seeing that space and go to take that first open space and you're going to be okay. This is a good picture. Okay, right here. With the tackle pull, pretty good scheme by him. They're able to block back on a four technique who's pinching to the B gap. So with them, with him and, and this linebacker sitting out here outside, okay, they, they've kind of created an extra gap right now. They put nine right here into a two-gap situation. Here's my A gap, right? Here's a puller. Obviously, the tailback's a threat to carry the ball, okay? So – Right now, you know, he's got a side based off what he's seeing. Am I pressing that gap or do I understand the scheme and, and can I get back inside? So don't take the first gap, work over, boom. Those double team is closed. We'd really like to see him press downhill maybe a little sooner once he clears it. All right, here's 42, some of the stuff we looked at earlier. Read step, come back in downhill, getting that near foot up, really kind of setting it and forcing it back. You know, if he continues to widen or doesn't get some kind of a body in there, I think you you now got a, a, a path for number eight where maybe he can out athlete or backer. So again, working in tandem, you know, even goes back to the to the two man drill we did where we're reading the two guards with the back. We're keeping leverage on it based off of that. And now you see all this other stuff where we've added those linemen. We found ways to add open and extra gaps with the pool drill coming in and they've got to make a decision which gap to take when there might be a situation where, you know, whether we were short because of the coverage or we were short because the offense did a good job blocking and scheming what we're going to do. So looking at another way that I kind of add vision into it is, is we say we read back to guard, but obviously if a tackle pulls, we won't see it and read a red. You know, so there, there's other guys that can pull besides the guard. So sometimes we focus on little stuff with our vision. Sometimes we, we, we focus on bigger pictures, and I think it – Sounds a little clinic-y, like clinic talk, but I think by starting to focus on something little and then learning to see more, like you're really able to train and expand your vision. And, and I honestly believe that. So right here, I just call this three-man drill. And we take two linemen and a linebacker, and, you know, I'll give them a signal. They're either going to go gap, okay, so, so they're going to open it up like that, so a space read, excuse me, not necessarily gap, we're going to go with a down block and a pull in either direction. So now we got to see those pullers and really fit in between them. Or we can zone either way and occasionally we'll mix in a, a, a pass just to keep guys honest where they see a high hat and have to get to a drop. So right here, zone, bang. You can see the rip stack carrying over again. So even though we're just working that zone, we're stacking the skill of, of the block destruction right there with the rip stack look. 
So to add to it, we always thought about wanting to get our eyes to the next target and introducing randomness and all that game-like situations into the drill. So you see on the first one right here, zone rip. He's got to decide now whether or not to stack because the back is initially really slow for him right there. Right, the back's taking his time. Once he starts to stack, the back tries to speed it up and outrun him. So, to me, that's adding a lot of randomness to the drill and just making it more and more game like. It's right here, zone the other way. He fits too wide, you know, too wide off of the zone. Let's take a look at it. You know, he, he's overrun the back already. That's his gap. He keeps leverage on the back within his gap. You know, and he can get flat and run just like the drill and some of the tackles we've seen happen in the game earlier. But instead, he's too wide, too fast. He's ripping on nothing, all right, because he's so wide, and now he's giving that back a cutback. He's not able to stack it, okay? And that's, you know, carry over from the one drill to the next and just seeing how those things continue to build a game-like situation. I uh, got the puppy of the group right here. Again, he, he's overrun a little bit. Of course, the, the, the back's intentionally trying to cut it back. You know, he's staying almost behind the block already. But we stack, you know, and you got to feel like in the game, if that's the situation, he starts to close the space in the gap. As he closes it, bang, get flat, run. You got to feel like you're going to have some help back there in the game to, to be able to help you make a tackle. So I don't have a, a lot of problem with that rep. The stuff, obviously, you know, just like everything we do, I think is going to translate into the game quite a bit. Okay, so you see nine right here working. There's the spill. Now he's able to turn, run, get flat, and, and kind of get in on the tackle. So, you know, not the most picture-perfect example of what we got right there, but it it's an example of it carrying over. Word to my gap. All right, now get my eyes to the ball. Okay, I fill my gap. There's somebody outside me. The ball continues to bounce. Now I'm able to run and get to it. You know, and, and going back to some of the other stuff, I like to see all this stuff carry over in the game. Here's 42. He's going to get the pull. Work. There's the blocker. You see that near foot down. Bang. Work back over the top. So he, he really put the defender's body back into that gap. So you can see there was a gap there because the spill wasn't real tight right here initially, but he puts him in there and closes that gap, okay, ensuring the ball's got to bounce now and we get a chance to run it down. So, again, I'll try to watch what happens in the game and simulate it. For something that gives us a problem, you can bet, especially if the offense is similar next week, that we're going to introduce that into the drill. So pretty good example here from nine. We get a tackle pull again. So real similar to what we saw, you know, kind of coming off the last drill, but there's that gap. So he took the space right here. Okay. Took the space and that, that a gap that's opened up. Now he gets flat. So it's just training your eyes. Really like to see him get a little flatter. He's almost too much. If he rip bang stack right here, it gets a little hold from the, no lineman, okay, but really like to see him stack it. So now the next thing you look at is 42, really needs to anticipate that block coming a little better. You see him get the near foot down late. But if he'll, he'll get that block down, you know, he's seeing space, but now he starts to chase the back, and that pulls him off a little bit. If he gets that block down, he can close that gap a little more right here to give nine a chance to play flat or through it and make the tackle for, for a little bit less of a gain than what they got. You know, still not bad considering they used the tackle tackle pool and, and kind of gained the gap on us right here. So not bad at all. Back on my young guys right here. All we're working right here is, again, it's another come to bounce. We're getting downhill, and we're not having a lot of shots like this in the game. What I really want to learn is, is let's get downhill, let's come to bounce, let's get the near foot up. So I'm kind of telling them where to leverage each time when they fit. And if they don't have leverage, I want to encourage them to keep leverage. And, you know, I build a lot of drills off of that. So we're going to work it just – you know, it's not hard to get a lot of quick reps. One one problem you'll see guys have with it sometimes is they don't know when to drop their hips. 
So you can see right here, I think I stole this off of USA Football. He's got his arms out. So when you're at arm's length, that's a pretty good time to start dropping. So you can continue to close space. Now, bang, drop, come to balance, and you're going to be able to get yourself in a position to make that tackle. So I like to have randomness and drills and, and make things game-like. Obviously, we're not going to get to fit on the stationary target very many times like this with a run and start. So one way I do it is once we've got a few, now you can see the target's just starting to move forward. So he moves forward. So now I can't just look and see where he's sitting. I've got to kind of react to him, react to that space closing. And you can play with different tempos. Obviously here with no pads, we're going to keep the guy that's moving in a, in a pretty slow tempo. But now you're getting into that game-like situation of having to drop your hips a little bit, having to adjust to a moving target. You can see here from the backside. You know, I like this drill because you can have three or four groups going at once. And you can kind of catch over here some other guys coming in. All right. But you can see now how that movement has affected his timing a little bit and thrown him off. So again, how can I how can I make it even working just this one skill that we're isolating? How can I make it even more game like? So you see 42 right here, press downhill, bang, I get close, start to come to balance. All right, now just be patient. That's not always a kill shot. I probably came to balance a little earlier than what I wanted, but realizing he's got a little bit of width on the play right there is not bad. Yeah, you can see him transition, really get that good base, now get active, bang. But that near foot was down, and it had him in that alignment where he can he can play and he can rely on his help, you know, to, to help him make the tackle or to force it back to the help. So, you know, not the best example because we're not going to get a 10-yard run and start a lot of times. Then the, the varied up, we're working from an angle because every angle tackle is not going to be a run through or, or a gator roll tackle. So we'll take, we'll work it from an angle and still work on getting that fit to get the profile tackle when we can to get as much surface on it as possible. And just a couple more pictures of it right there, coming back, squaring back up off of that run. And it's really very similar to, to the cone drill that we, we looked at at the beginning. You know, in this case, I was using it to teach kind of a tackling fit, but it can also be used to, to, to teach a block fit. So here's a pretty good example, 58, downhill, bang. Now near foot up, okay, doesn't really get in the shuffle. I think he could have probably gotten to a shuffle and got the tackle, but the ball starts to get wide, so he drops drops to the ankle. 42, not great footwork, gives up his step, gives up his base a little bit. You can see he's not able to get the near foot down, and now he's having a battle with a bigger blocker. So he eventually gets off and falls back in. But if he keeps the fundamental strong right here, he's going to be in a better position to hit it and get off. A little bit of a goal post in the way right here. But you can see 58, he works downhill, gets a little wide, and, and we work these situations coming from, from opposite angles sometimes. But he's downhill, he's a little wide, but now he slides back in. And, and really just a good example of getting back into where we kind of finish with that shuffle into an angle profile, bang. He's coming from angle, but he's still able to get peck on peck, near foot up, drive, run the feet, hold on to your help, get there if you got to. So, you know, a lot of my tackling drills are looking at the things we see in a game and, and, and how they carry over and how I can simulate them into practice. So right here, just really working, ripping those double uppercuts, getting a tackle, okay, in tight space. And sometimes we'll, we'll even do this where, and I, I don't have film of it, but it was one of the closest pictures I had where you have a guy maybe holding one of those arms down, pinning one of those arms down, and, and now you got to shoot with one arm and, and you'll see 32 kind of in that situation right here. We get zone, uh, he's coming, he's pressing, he's kind of wrapped up, but you can see still really bringing that chest and those hips, you know, despite having that bigger body hanging on him and, and using what he can and left arm's pretty much free so he can get there to wrap, fighting to get the right arm through. And, you know, I just look and there's, there's times in a game where you've got somebody hanging on you, you got to make a tackle. So you got to find some time to work that. Is it something that gets worked every week? You know, not necessarily, but it's something that if, if we're lacking or, or we're going to play a line that does a really good job of getting up on backers, it may get worked that week. Otherwise, it's something that gets worked in camp and maybe every second or third week gets added. So now kind of moving into more of an open field situation, and this is one where you can definitely, like, vary your look because you can start, you know, from different angles right here. Obviously, we're 45-degree angle across from each other. Uh, but you can start a guy kind of in the middle of the, the, the 
the distance, you know, cut the distance in half, start him in the middle and provide a sideline. But we're getting that downhill run. Now we're coming to bounce. We're going to shuffle. You know, obviously going to try to fit near foot up and tag off. So really try to do a lot with, with open field and simulating those things. And, you know, again, I know we don't get that free run a lot at linebacker, but you get – get into some situations, you know, and even here, this applies because he's wide. He's got to come back and react. He's overrun a little bit. You see the angle for 42 right there trying to work to it. So, you know, balls inside me, it's working away. And we work, you know, literally all those different angles just by, by changing the placement of the back or changing the placement of the linebacker. You know, sometimes we start head up. Sometimes we start diagonal, you know, opposite diagonally on the square. Sometimes we start you know, head up, but we can only work in one direction and then cut back. Sometimes we use four, you know, cones that are real tight and back to back and you circle a cone and now you have to retrace, find the hip and really use the leverage that you've got coming off of whichever cone it is. And we're just learning to, to, to retract our eyes based off all that. And this, again, just the different ways it carries over. So you can see right here, we're not quite as tight to the sidelines. They're changing the angle up a little bit and we're, we're having the guy work more just straight up the sideline now. And to me, again, not a situation we're in a lot of linebacker could be on special teams at some point, all right? but we're, we're changing that angle. We're changing the reaction constantly. You know, we're, we're constantly having to work to track the hip and to keep leverage. And to me, we work skill of tackling, but then when you add the movement, the eyes, and the footwork that's required in the open field, like you're really making it more of a football drill, even if it's not the most game-like for a linebacker. In a lot of ways, it is game-like. You can see here just just more examples of all right we're working working downhill bang beat a block now even at that i'm kind of working in the open field so i got to figure out where his hip is be able to try to get that near foot down and and make the play so a really good job by 58 right here taking on the block you know getting off still working to get the near foot down and you can see 42 falling in on the play whole time just start to press bang pull track there's the open gaps. So it is really putting together everything we've talked about. You know, close, get over the top. Now, fit into the open gap, track, keep tracking the hip. So if my eyes get taken off my target, they have to keep going back to my target. And it's really just, you know, part of that cycle of vision, decision, and, and reaction that I like to talk about with my kids. So here's 42, you know, and what amounts to an open field tackle. And it, that's why we work that stuff right here. He's down, it's not always gonna be pretty. Okay, don't like the foot he's got up. He's inviting the cut back by, you know, right here, the outside foot's up, his hips are turned. So if the quarterback was able to, to stick his foot in the ground and get vertical right here, you know, off of, the, off of the, the hip of 74, we got some trouble. Okay, but but he's got out there, he's understanding the situation, and he, now he comes to balance. You can see, bang, transition, he gets the near foot up, and he, he's able to fit off on that tackle. And to me, so maybe the initial spacing we start with isn't the exact same as, you know, in that box drill tackle we just looked at, but there's really a lot of similarities to the finish. So we've got to move, we've got to find the, the hip of the ball carrier, and now we've got to turn that open field tackle into a short, closed space tackle, but we've got to be able to keep our position in there to make the tackle and, and finish, you know, given, given all the circumstances. So really good picture of him right here kind of incorporating some of those ideas so we talked about adding a, a distraction to the tackle you know or, or whatever it may be so now we got to play the game it's a, it's a two-on-one situation and that's never a good situation but at least by by practice that we kind of get a look at it you can see 53 right here he, he commits early Okay, it, and it doesn't work out for him real good. You know, first two do a pretty good job, and the kids like this because they can really try to get after each other. Uh, and, you know, it goes all the way back early on talking about the pace of the back and, you know, the angle of the back and where I am in relation to the ball. And we can kind of cut out some of my, my talking right here that I was doing on the field. Good job. You know, to me, this is about as good a job as you're going to do right here. So the ball's pressing. At some point, you got to make a decision. He fits. Okay, if we could have rip stacked right there, it would have been great. Whatever reason we couldn't. So now he fit, he commits the other way. I got to get back off it and really pursue that hip and, and add myself. So, um, you know, heard Wade Phillips recently say, you know, your assignment is a gap, for instance, but your responsibility is to pursue the ball. Okay, 
So your job is to pursue the ball. So it's kind of two different things. So we get a fit. Now we got to get off and pursue. So we might have fit our gap, but that's not where the ball is. And for whatever reason, it's able to bounce into another gap. We really got to be able to pursue. And, you know, I'm always trying to find ways to kind of incorporate that. You know, um, the run and gather drill a lot of people do. I'll do that drill by adding a couple of bags or buckets or even, you know, two people kind of at various steps in between. And we've got to decide whether to go over them or under them based on the tempo of the back and the angle of where we are. And, it's you know, to me, it's always once we take our basic drill, how can we just add just a little bit to it to, to make it better. So a really great example right here, the drill we just looked at, okay, 58 sees the pull, 42 is gone, he doesn't see it. So 58, you, you know, this to me encompasses everything we've looked at today. So you get your initial read. Back steps one way, 58 takes a step, sees the, the, the puller coming late, sees the floor to back, now he redirects, crosses over a little bit. He's got to decide whether to take space or not. And, and really right, Right here, there was almost a chance for him to insert. Okay, peripheral vision sees that, sees that defensive tackle, defensive end working into that gap now. So I'm going to keep shuffling, working over. Now, uh oh, I'm in trouble. Two on one. I feel like there's some help outside me, so I start to fit outside. Now I see the running back really cuts back inside, so blocker's not in a good position. I'm able to come off and make the tackle. And to me, that if you can make that play at linebacker you can play, okay, your athletic ability and, and nothing else is going to matter. So, you know, as we conclude, my thoughts here would be that, you know, you, you've got to take and put your guys in as many game-like situations. And I apologize for not having, you know, more film, some ways I do that. And, I, you know, I love talking about it if anybody wants to, wants to contact me and talk some more. But put them in those game-like situations Find a way to, to drill it and just make them make decisions over and over and over. Put them in situations where they outnumber the ball carrier. Put them in situations where they are outnumbered by the offense. You know, it could be three on two, two on two, three on three. Just create different situations and different drills to stack the, the skills of, of footwork, stance, step, start, you know, all that's within footwork, movement patterns, block destruction, rip, punch, whatever it may be, tackling, reads, fits. And, and do that in different ways that they can be outnumbered and create different angles for them. And, you know, one drill is not going to simulate everything you do in the game. You're never going to simulate really all the situations you can get to in the game. When you talk about the different angles they're coming from and, and, you know, the speed and tempo of a back on a given play. But I think you can do a lot, you know, by, by finding ways to, to introduce that uh, decision-making process into practice where they got to make it on the fly and, and, make them better you know a good friend of mine called was wanting to talk about linebacker fits the other day and i just told him i didn't take them there's a space and i can take it and make the tackle take it if there's a space and i can't take it and make the tackle then don't take it work to the next space because that's already where the ball carrier is at and i think you know when you teach it like that just train them to make those reactions you're going to end up you know having a pretty good turnout from your linebackers your productivity will, will rise and things will be really good so that's all I've got for you. Love to talk ball. If anybody wants to contact me again, you know, my Twitter was at the beginning. Um, email address, James Johnson at richmond.k12.nc.us. Thank you guys for listening.